Hello? Yo, dude, what's up? Hey, uh, I'm good. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing good. Uh, mm -hmm. How, uh, I'm always curious to hear how things have been going for you, but how is, uh, since last time, how's your Terran games been going? Um, I think I, I was able, like, last time we went through the defense thing, right? So I think I, I got better at the defense. Mm -hmm. Uh, but however, after that phase, I, I keep losing games. So I have a replay today for that. Uh, but on top of that, I do have some other questions. It's like, I, I couldn't find a replay, but I lost be, uh, I, I lost in this style several times. I, I just can't find a, re find a replay. Plus, I, I thought it's best if we just keep on focusing what we were focusing last time. Sure. So for this question, it's, it's more like a general question. It's oh, like when, okay. um, when the opponent goes straight up to turtle, and then, like, he wants to make up this power unit, like, in terms of Terran Mech or um, Protoss Death Ball. Like, uh, if I try to force aggression, it usually doesn't work. And then at that point, what 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 is the game game plan supposed to be? You know, I, I know I sh I'm supposed to, you know, expand like crazy. But in the games that I lose, I, I expanded like crazy. And he just came up with this big ball and just pushed. And then because my 200 supply army isn't that powerful, and at that point I am either forced into a base trade, or I'm forced to, I'm not sure, switch to Mac or something. Like that, that's, I'm not sure what to do. So, uh, bio is definitely going to be the composition where if you're going to, like, you have to understand that if you're going to stay on bio, you definitely have to break your opponent down and not let them, like, if they do get to, like, the point where they are on, like, a death ball, for instance, it's always a good idea to try to, like, have it either you could base trade or you could have something go around their death ball. Uh, bio is never going to win a fight if you just straight up go, okay, well, my opponent has a very expensive army and I have bio and let's just take a fight against his army and we're both the same supply. You're going to lose every single time because bio doesn't scale as well as other units in the game does uh, once it's maxed out like that. So you definitely need to always be thinking to yourself, if, if I'm going to stay on bio, I have to either commit everything or something to killing his economy regardless of the point in the game that you're in. Uh, it's either like a little counterattack or it's a heavy doom drop type shit. Either way is okay to like doom drop is a little risky though. Uh, honestly, if you're if you go to the wrong place at the wrong time, you could lose everything if he's like already there defensively and waiting for you. Um, but yeah, always have the idea that no matter what, every time if you go bio and you don't have anything else after bio, which is a normal way to play Terran, you have to fucking kill his base. You cannot just ignore the base and kill his army. That is always the wrong thing to do. The only time you ever go for the army is when you've already broken his base. Then you he can't replace what dies, and you can keep replacing what dies for you, and you wear it down. Uh, then that works. That's fine. <coughs> but if you want to transition to anything, mech is an option, but mech is fucking hard to transition into like this. It's not going to always be reliable, especially depending on what you're fighting against. Uh, I would... And I uh, this is... I don't expect you to do what I'm about to say, but if you did do this, I think this would be the highest win rate for you. Uh, this is definitely what I would recommend to anybody who's like diamond level Terran. It, this, and if you, this is something you could still do higher level, but it's not as common because in general, the way you want to play Terran is you want to control the game with bio overall, if you're going to play a bio style. But a way you could actually transition the game uh, out of bio for the easiest, in my opinion, the easiest, most effective way to transition to a death ball yourself would be to literally go second armory battle cruiser, and you just like make like you go up to like three port uh, tech lab BCs, and you like you build up your BC count and you just get double upgrades for air, if you're trying to transition to that. But again, I'm not saying that you should do that every time. But if I would say that's the easiest transition to do because if you just transition to like ground factory mech, you're gonna probably fucking die. Uh, that is a whole different kind of playstyle. And you need to, like, know how to play mech to make that work. You can't just expect that mech units are going to be stronger than bio, so you just win. You can totally get fucked with mech, because now your army is super sluggish, and if you make the wrong kind of mech, you die. Like, mech requires a really good understanding of, like, what your opponent's comp is, and at what kind of comp you need to be making at any point in time to have a proper comp there. Like, if you have too many tanks or too many Thors, either one can be really bad, depending on what they have. Uh, stuff like that. Okay. So I would say, I personally, just a long, like long story short, 
if you want to make a transition, I honestly think BCs would be the best because they are the most versatile unit Terran has. That is a power unit. They can deal with everything, literally. You just have to get enough of them. That's the hardest part about it. Uh, but realistically, it, I don't think you should think too much about the transition. I think that if you want to do one, it should be BCs. But you should focus definitely more on just the bio aspect and controlling and think about how you need to be using bio through the game. Because uh, mm -hmm. ideally what you want to do is you want to break their base while they're trying to get to a death ball, if that's what they're doing, playing turtley and stuff. But if they do get to a death ball, you still have to break their base. And you could do it in a way where it doesn't have to necessarily be like a doom drop in the main with everything. But let's say you leave half your army at his like fourth base, like or, like outside of his fourth base, and the other half of your army goes into his main base. And you kill his main, or like you start killing his main, he comes back to defend it, and you go kill his fourth at the same time. Like stuff like that, you need you definitely need to break his uh, economy for sure. Because once you do that, bio becomes very effective because you can wear his army down then. Okay. And to handle planetary fortresses, I need more than marines, right? I kind of need marauders and tanks. Yeah, marauders. Uh, so if you're not doing like, uh, you can answer this yes or no. Late game, do you start making tech lab barracks? Yes. Okay, so perfect. Yeah, I would say later on in the game, you should have, like, we're talking like your economy is fully set up, okay? You have like 80 plus SCVs. You have, let's say, like five bases or some shit, four bases. And you have like, you're maxed out. And you have a good infrastructure of, of just reproduction. You should definitely have like four or five tech labs of barracks. Especially if your opponent is doing something that you need to break down with our anti-armored shots because you're not really going factory heavy with this so you're not really relying on a lot of siege tanks so marauder definitely good choice and Mar like, marauder will stim pack down a pf especially if you're three three ridiculously fucking fast okay cool a good a, a, a good mm -hmm. point of reference really fast uh off the top of your head, or just, uh, I'll just say it. Like, I want to make this seem like really easy. Instead of saying a number, I want to have a visual in your mind. You want to have 12 Marauder, and the way that would look in your control group would just be you'd have one full row and half of another row. If you have anywhere like 12, around 12, like 10 plus or like 12 plus, like if you, let's say you have 17, or let's say you have 15, or let's say you have 13, you have 11. 11 like okay, but anything 12 plus is actually really good. If you're going to, like, engage a PF, you will fucking ridiculously, like, delete it before SCVs repair it really fast. But if you're trying to engage a planetary with, like, eight eight, like eight marauders or, like, six marauders, uh, it's going to get a little messy. Uh, like, it depends how many marines you have there, but it's probably going to get messy. So, like, tw I would say, just in general, think about if you're going to engage a PF, always try to have, like, around 12 or, or more, and you will just drop that thing really fast. And okay. obviously you're including Marines there too, but yeah. Like 12 Marauder is going to do really well. That's like four ships of medevacs, right? If you have Marines, because 12 is like three medevacs already. Yeah, four, no. four, four medevacs of Marauder would be 16 slots. So yeah, that would be three medevacs of Marauder. Yeah, but you also said I need some Marines. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. So I also don't want you to think that you always have to drop everything, right? You could, okay. you could just walk over there. Because a PF is also going to be the outside of their base, generally speaking. Like, no one's going to put a PF inside their base, like in, the, in their main or something. So okay. PFs are always going to be on the outside. You can absolutely walk over there and have like three medevacs supporting supply that's three times the size that what they could hold. And you could just run it down mm -hmm. and just kill it that way. But all I'm saying is if you're actually engaging a PF, 12 Marauder mm -hmm. is going to get the job done before you actually like are like, wow, that was a mistake. Like, I shouldn't have done that. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, yep. So I'll send you the replay. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. I, I just remembered another thing. Like the the build that you gave me was to do banshee, right? And then the banshee is without cloak. I I couldn't handle it. Is it okay if I? I'm actually not sure. Is, am I supposed to try cloak banshee, or is it okay for me to switch away? You because so. Mm -hmm. If you make Banshee in general, your opponent's pretty much going to always have some type of defense against Banshee. They're not going to... I think a lot of... You're not going to see, like, someone be like, oh, he's going Banshees, and he's not going Cloak. I don't need any type of defense. I'm fine. I'll, I'll be able to deal with this with whatever. Almost everybody's going to be like, okay, 
I'm gonna make a spore. I'm gonna make a turret. I'm gonna make a can or I'm gonna have an observer with stalkers or a cannon or a shield battery or like whatever they're gonna make. They're gonna <coughs> always make something because they, they have to react to a banshee either way. So the reason why, if you're not gonna get cloak, why that would be good, would be you're not over investing into it because the more you invest into it in terms of time, which is the bigger one. And then also on top of that, resources. It only puts more pressure that it needs to do more. And if your opponent's going to make, like, let's say a turret, either way, if you make a Banshee, and the turret totally fucks you over, because let's say he has a Cyclone or something, and a turret, and it just, like, completely zones you out, and you have to run away. And you're like, well, shit, I invested a lot into this, and it didn't do anything. That just puts you in a harder spot to come back from. So... If you don't like the Banshee build, you could definitely change it and do something else. But if you want to keep doing it, that's also fine. It's just nice because if you do do it, the perks about it are it keeps your opponent defensive. It allows you to have some breathing room to do whatever you want. And if you get really good at it, while setting up your base, you can also... It's, it's one of those things where it, it's probably the best way to explain this. Even if you don't do a lot of damage to his economy, like let's say like you don't kill a bunch of SCVs, if you take advantage of the fact that he's playing defensive and you expand with that, you still get economic leads, which you can carry forward in the game. But obviously you want to okay. do damage with the Banshees. Like, that's ideally what you want okay. as well. I just found it easier against um, Terran to drop mines doing more damage and against um, Sir a Liberator is like easier to get a few more drone kills. Like, a lot of times my Banshee just goes there and then maybe shoot three shots and one of them hits the, ex the what's that called, the gas? Sure. And then right. it's just get shooed away by the queen, and, and it's like red in the red zone. Uh -huh. so. I mean, if you want to do a different build uh, unit, I'm totally okay with that. I I, I don't mind. I'm not going to be like, you have to go Banshees. <laughs> okay. If you, if something, if because if, everyone has style as well about what they, like units they prefer. And some people excel with certain units over others. So like based on how you like to her attack people, like what you just, what feels good to you. So if you want to go Libs, I get Zerg and you want to do Widow Mine drops and stuff. I mean, that's totally fine. Uh, you just make sure you want to make sure that wh whatever you're doing, you're doing it in a way that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. All right. Uh, but yeah, that's fine. Uh, I think Lib is totally good versus Zerg. I have a question about Libs, though, for you. Do you combine that with Hellions or you just do Lib by itself? Uh, so I try to combine it with Hellions. But uh, if I see a lot of Zerglings on the map, sometimes I just leave the Hellions at my third and then just use the Lib itself. Are you going 1-1-1 with this? Yes, 1-1-1. One, one, one. So you're, you're third? Okay. I would say if your third is at your third already, mm -hmm. against Zerg specifically, when you're doing a 1-1-1 mm -hmm. Lib Hellion Harass, that is really greedy. And I would actually recommend that you use the Hellions aggressively and you leave the third behind your wall at your natural or like in your main and then you lift it off and land it once you have bio to cover it. Okay. Because I'm not going to lie, Hellions being forced to stay defensively is not good for you. There's The, the, the Hellions can actually do more damage than the Liberator uh, if you have a, like a good setup. If you don't just run in and get surrounded by Lings and be like, oh shit, I threw him away. Like Hellions can actually kill drones ridiculously fast. Uh, it puts a lot of it puts way more pressure on the Zerg than the Lib does, but a Lib is still good. Like it's not a bad unit, and it, it makes it way harder for Zerg to not take damage when you're combining those two things. Like you just like shift command of a Lib into the Zerg's main mineral line or something, and then you actually micro the Hellions, and Zerg has to actively micro both sides to deal with that, and it makes it way more messy for Zerg. It's way better than leaving Hellions defensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. So, questions and stuff, like, for now, uh, how you feeling? Do you want anything else you want to talk about really quick? Uh, it's, yeah, I, I was, like, this, I have several replays, uh, but before I wanted to send you, I actually uh, checked them myself, and I realized that uh, some huge macro gap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, and I also figured that out. It's just practice, right? And uh, this, I don't like you're, this one, okay. Hmm? Oh, sorry, your, your mic was kind of cut out there. It was hard to hear what you're saying. Uh, not much. I, I was trying to say this one is uh, against Protoss, where uh, we're still uh, in the um, defend early aggression phase, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, I think I defend the 
first round, and then I didn't have a clear game plan after you know, the defense. So I, I couldn't tell if the opponent is going like all in or the opponent is just like, yeah, I'm done with the harass, let me just expand. Like I couldn't tell for a long time. And then I think I made the wrong choice of not having a third uh, on on time. So I eventually lost the game, but okay. As, yeah, sure. so then I'd like to have a look and then, you know, yeah, yeah. point out something else that I'm not okay. aware of. Let's see. All right, so I have the, the stream up on Discord. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's see what's going on. Everything looks fine. Again, there's obviously... I know you know how to do this part. No problem. Your scout time is on time. It's good. <laughs> the way you handled the probe is fine. Uh, your scout is so far fine. Nice. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, uh, really quick, I'm gonna go back for one second and I'm gonna look at your scout. And... So, this right here is... The only thing I would say that I would want you to do differently, okay? There's only one thing I would want you to do differently here. To, to like, confirm what you're dealing with. Because it... we I Okay, it's so you didn't see the pylon, okay? For the gateway up here. And it looks like he's going to go Nexus. It looks like he's going to go one gate Nexus. But the only thing I would want you to confirm is... Did he actually start a core? Or does there is there no core? Because if there is no core, it's going to be a fucking Nexus. Like, you're going you're gonna to guarantee that. And it would just take your SCV like a little bit of a detour to go like right there. Like it would be very, very minor. It would be like not even like one second of movement and then he could leave. Because the only reason why I would say that is because the reason, the, the thing that would be annoying for you is if the second you left this guy's base, he already had a core started and he threw down a second gas and then he expands and then suddenly all his tech timings are a little bit faster. And maybe you needed like a fucking turret or something to make up the difference. Cause now maybe there's gonna be like a a quicker fucking tech build, like an oracle or something in your base. It would be annoying as shit for you. Uh, so it's just confirming that he is going to go Nexus before core. And it's then it actually is standard. Because this... I mean, the fact that he's currently boosting the Nexus makes it look like it's going to go economy. The fact that he's only got one gas so far makes it look like it's going to go economy. But it's just a minor fucking scout from where you already are just to confirm yes. that there is no core. And there actually is a core. So... This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say if this guy's because you, you gotta realize something. If you're like, the reason why I said this is because right here, you push the probe away and you take your natural right now. And you don't know if he is going to take a natural either yet or not. And the core is way fucking faster than it. Like the fact that I, just, I want you to know this. Okay, this is probably the better way to say this. If Protoss is playing standard, they should have a Nexus going down by like 130. The only reason why you have a later natural than Protoss, generally speaking, is because you prioritize Orbital Command, which is correct for you, by the way. You should totally do that because mules are insane. Like, you definitely want to prio that. But Protoss does not need to prio core. But the fact that he does, all it does is it makes more aggressive stuff more likely. So, that's a, it's like... It, it's, it's good to know that your opponent is now already in the more like a slightly more of the aggressive standpoint of the game. It's he's like leaning towards that already. So when you scout him with the Reaper, you could it could be changed from okay, maybe instead of being so fucking aggressive on like maybe killing a probe, maybe now I just confirm if he's like actually rushing tech or not. Like are you getting warp gate really fast or are you saving gas to go for a quick stargate? Because you rushed your core, what is that for? You know what I mean? Like it's like the mindset of like figuring out what he's doing with aggressive tendencies or, I, or go ahead sorry so so normal standard protoss build is a uh, gate gas nexus i yes. thought it was gate core nope nexus. that is not standard gate core okay. is aggressive that's that's okay. rushing tech like okay. that would almost it's not quite because a core is a different cost than a factory but it would almost be like you going barracks factory to, uh, command center 
because they're already investing in tech path and delaying expansion okay uh but yeah it's it's obviously not exactly the same Protoss works a little bit different but yeah it should 100 percent be gate nexus core uh for a standard build so the Protoss's nexus should be going down at like 130 like roughly on most maps and if nothing weird happened so yeah, I'd, yeah, the scout could have been a little bit more thorough. This is all I'm saying there. Right, a couple seconds missed there on the SCV. Not the end of the world, as long as that's like the only one. But it, that definitely is not good. Okay, you actually go back and scout again. I like that. I like that you went back and scouted again. Uh, but again, just to make you feel sure of things here. As you scouted. I'm going to pause it right as you saw it. If you notice that versus that, knowing that a barracks, or uh, sorry, a command center and a, a nexus, if a Protoss has a nexus at the same time as you as well, this is another sign, by the way. It means that they went for a core just like you went for an orbital, so they delayed their nexus. So this is, once again, just like everything we said before. It increases the speed of Protoss' tech path if they want it to be that. So if you saw this... If you never saw the core, or if you see the core first, that's even better. But like for like knowing what it is, I would say this Reaper now absolutely should look at the core as you get to his base, just to confirm that he's getting warp gate, and look at the gateway just to confirm he's building a unit. And th there is a very good chance a unit is gonna e maybe even be out already by the time you're like walking up the ramp, because that's a fucking prioed core. So if he chrono boosts it, he could actually have a stalker like there as you try to jump up. And that's another sign, too, that that stalker's really fast. Because generally speaking, a lot of times, if a Protoss goes for a Nexus and then a Core, the stalker will pop out, or whatever unit will pop out, like, as you get to the probe line. Like, five seconds, eight seconds later, or something. Uh, it's just, again, it's just about, like, knowing if he's going to go for fast tech or not. We don't have to focus too hard on this. I feel like I made my point. But it kind of changes sometimes about how your build should be, because fast tech builds are scary about losing SCVs. That's why it's important. You don't want to be like, I am not going to change anything I'm doing and have an open mineral line for longer, and I might lose a bunch of them for that. The scariest one is a Stargate, I would say. Okay, so otherwise, you're fine. You killed the probe, which is nice. Made a marine, which is nice. Reactor. Definitely want to make that bunker as soon as you can. Second gas of the factory. Good shit. You're going into his base, and you see an adept already out. And that's huge. Uh, the fact that you did that right there, I really like that. Okay, so you're hopefully you don't lose the reaper, but I really like that you can like you just check the pylon, because you just there's still a little bit of room here that you haven't seen, but it's it's depending on how you use this reaper in a second, it's kind of scary to commit in here because if he attacks you twice and then has a shade follow you and then it gets you a third time, you definitely could lose the reaper, which would suck. Uh, but the fact that you confirmed the core is spinning, so he's not saving gas like crazy, it, 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 all it does is it decreases the chance of a super quick Stargate build. And that's the only thing that you should really be scared about if the guy prios a core. You don't need to really worry about a fast Robo. You don't need to really worry about a fast Council as Terran. Like, the, 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 the fact that he's expanding with it still, the timings are still close enough that you're not really going to notice that much of a difference. Like, you'll be fine. But you do need to worry about a fast Stargate because your SCVs could totally fucking take like pay the price for that. So good, really good scout. I love that you got out. That was great, and you you did try to see as much as you could. Great scout. I think your Reaper should now take a lap down here and try to maybe poke at the side like this. Next, like, you, I would say you took way too wide of a turn there, just to talk about it. I would say you should have definitely just run straight down and around and went back up. Because you easily would regenerate the amount of health that you needed to get back to full. And the amount of time it would take you just to do that. But you'll notice, like, as you run away, like, you're already starting to regen health, like, right as you cross the pylon. And uh, you're going to be, like, full health way before you get back into his base. So you're definitely missing some time here to, like, be effective. And the effectiveness of this Reaper is very temporary. And it's, it's stopping now too. I definitely want to make sure you get it back in again, just just to kind of more. I would say this: this is not the end of the world. It's not the biggest deal, 
But the more active the Sweeper is, before it gets completely shut down, the better off you are. Like, the Sweeper could be doing a lot more than it is. And it could help you set the pace in a better way for you. If it if it's too distracting, obviously I would prefer you to prior your base, but I would say that's definitely something you should practice, is as soon as this Reaper is at full health, try to be getting back into his base as much as you can. And around, I would say around like 3.30, it, it's over. Like you're not going to be able to do much anymore because you'll get like one shot as you go into the base if you go at the wrong place. Because they'll have like three units by then. And you'll just die. Uh, so like you, you, you only have like about 20 seconds left to do anything with this Reaper. Otherwise, it's going to become useless anyways for scouting purposes. Uh, like, like basically it would be suicide missions at that point, which is, it means it's just going to die. Build wise for you again seems fine. Nothing wrong with it yet. Uh, the the, SC, the one SCV you missed was again very minor, but that's about it. So you're going in again. And you stopped to fight. The, I don't. I, obviously, I, I think that was a mistake. Like I, I I'm not. I don't think you meant to do that. I think that was a, that you didn't mean to let the Reaper stop like that because obviously it just died. But that does kind of suck for you now because you could have potentially seen tech, and there's actually a council, so you could have actually realized what build it is. And if I were to ask you, if you did see this, do you feel confident that you know what kind of a build this would look like? Uh, I would guess a prism, though. Exactly. 100% is a prism. Prism something, I can't tell. That's uh, correct. So what you, what you just said, that's all I wanted you to say. That's perfect. You don't actually know what kind of a prism it is, but it absolutely is a prism. So you got to worry about the fact that it, it could go into charge lots. It could go into uh, Blink Stalker. It could go into Adepts. It could even go into DTs. But the fact that he went Council Priority first and then Robo, it's always a prism. So all you got to do def to defend that now is if you do attack Protoss, it should be something minor. Like, if you, uh, for instance, if you're like, I really want to do a Widow Mind drop or I don't know, something like that, that's fine. But make sure that you have a priority now, like we talked about last time, to check the size of your base with like a depot and be ready for a prism. Like, don't don't fuck up your unit production. Like, make sure that, that your your production's rolling as much as like you're not you're not missing windows of building units. Like right now, I guess you're not making an SCV. I would say that's definitely a priority for sure. But it's only been one second because you just like just finished the command center, so it's it's not the end of the world yet, and you just use the Reaper. Uh, but yeah, make sure you definitely make sure you fix that very soon. Uh, but yeah, knowing that like what it is. Oh, prism. Let's make sure we get our base vision wise covered, so I know where it is and I can situate myself. Unlike last time, where it's like what we talked about, where it's like that flimsy defense, so that doesn't happen. Okay, go back to your vision. <coughs> and yeah, like right now, you're uh, obviously you're confused because you don't know what tech he's doing. So you, you are playing this blind. So I will take that into consideration. I know that you don't actually know what he's doing. But you are still going for it. What am I drop? You're... Uh, be careful about too many of depots as well. Only one. Only one. And the reason why I say only one is because, once again, if this guy were to go for... Uh, like Blink Stalker, or if you were to go for a Void Ray Opener, anything that can basically do damage to Armored. The more you stack more of your shit over here, the more compromised your base could be. Like, if it's only one depot, it's not the end of the world if the guy kills it, and it gives you, it's like it's like a warning. It's like, oh, Protoss is here. But if you stack too many buildings, suddenly it starts becoming a situation where you're like, I kind of need to save that, and it puts pressure on you now to go guard that. So definitely don't compromise all your buildings. You just want, like, one for vision. You don't want to put all of them over here. Like, two is not... It's just not necessary. And anything, if you put even more, it's even worse. It's just for vision. Like, that's so minimal investment. Alright. So you have your Widow Mines. You have your Medivac. Careful of the this. I don't know what this is going on here, but this is super scary for you. I don't know what that is. 
<laughs> Are you scouting third bases with this? Is this what this is? I think it was. Okay, don't do that. Uh, that should be the Reaper's job or an SCV. The reason okay. the reason why I would like one SCV. Don't don't even do two SCVs. The reason why I would say this is definitely not what you want to do is because your build is very weak again in terms of an opener with uh, like if this Protoss decided to go for something really heavy like an all in. Okay. It's very scary for you right now because you what you already have invested into is going into harassment. All of your tech so far is 100% going into harassment. So you have no tech to defend your base. Like there's no cyclone here. There's no siege tank here. There's there's nothing with more power to defend yourself. And you do have a bunker, but you have I'm not saying you should build one, but but you have like nothing in the main base, okay? Like you are kind of vulnerable. So making yourself more vulnerable is scary for you. Definitely want to use like an SCV instead. Uh, you want to have as many, like th these Marines early game are so important because if this guy were to, like if you attack him and you're like, oh, I got a nice one on my drop. That's great. But if he attacks you at the same time, you're just increasing your chances to di actually die. Uh, so definitely uh, don't ever use Marines to a scout at this point in the game. Always use like one SCV if your Reaper dies. <clears throat> I do like that you're scouting though. Just yeah, wrong unit. Just because you got you got to realize how weak this is in terms of if you if the Protoss were to get aggressive right now. You're about to get stronger, but you, right now you are actually weak. And you saw a prism. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed it, but like in the game, but you definitely just saw a prism going towards your main base. So you have two choices now, just like last time. Do you want to? try to guard the wall here like you ask yourself do i have enough marines to actually kill that i would say if these marines were back here <coughs> and you had like 10 marines all standing on the cliff side as he tries as he tries to fly into your base you absolutely have enough marines to kill that prism 10 marines could totally like three shot a prism and then it would do that in about a matter of two seconds uh basically which is you know that's that's very fast but if the prism is like too close, like let's just say like movement wise, like it's about like right there right now, right? Like you just saw it. Can you, can the prism go from here to here faster than you can go from here to here? I would say yes. The answers are, the, my guess there would be, yeah, it totally can. So this is a judgment call, but this would be a moment where I would say the only way you're going to honestly be able to hold this realistically is if you were to also maybe like pull SCVs because the whole the reason why I would say that is the chances of you killing the prism before it unloads in your base is zero now. You're too far away, movement wise, to get here before he drops units in your base. He's going to drop units in your base. So if your unit like now then then the question is it's no longer can I kill a prism before it drops units? Now the question is, can my Marines kill four Protoss units? With, with 10 Marines with, without upgrades. Like, can, can I actively well off kill four Protoss units? Because it's not just, it's also not just gonna be four either. It's gonna, it would, it could start as four and warp in more. So if you're not gonna be able to just destroy four units right away and then continuously overpower the warp ins, I would say you probably should not run up there to stop that. Again, unless you were to pull SCVs. And the reason why pulling SCVs would work is because if they were A moving, not all of them, by the way, but maybe like six SCVs, eight SCVs, it would just be like bodies that get on top of the, SC, the, the prism units so that your marines aren't taking damage. So you're not losing marines as you're killing units out of the prism. You're just like maintaining the DPS, essentially. But you got to really think about that. Like, does it make sense to fight that there or not? Like, am I going to crush this or not? And if you're not, if the answer is no, you let him have that position and you do what we talked about last time where you take better positioning for yourself. Like, you... you guard your base you make a siege tank or a cyclone or something you do something where you can defensively take an advantage where like you can have a tank every time he tries to engage you he's getting pounded by a tank and you're guarding the tank with marines or something like that uh because yeah if you just walk up there there's a chance you might break and like lose all your marines and think about it like this too if you didn't lose your marines and you guard this and let's say there's only one depot instead of three and you also would have my drop him at the same time over here with your medevac 
if you don't really take any damage and you just like you're guarding your base and letting him have this area, but he just loses a bunch of probes, you're winning the game anyways at that point. But if you throw all your marines away and you kill probes, the game is a oh, fucking mess and who knows who's going to win. So, your marines get here. I think to be honest, so this is a moment where I would say the prism stopped. There's no fucking way your marines could be here. He stopped exactly. He stopped to warp in DTs. And that's one of the possibilities that we talked about that could happen if the guy goes council first. So now there are DTs warping into your base, uh, like or will be dropping in your base. So that will be a moment where I would say, if the Protoss player, if you confirmed with that Reaper early in the game that this Protoss player was opening up council first, it's not the worst idea in the world to react to that by making an NG bay and making a turret in your bases so that you don't get fucked by DTs or saving scans until your Raven's out. That's also totally viable. And right now you do have scans available, which is good. The only thing that's scary about this though is if this Protoss player were to send a DT into both your bases at the same time. You, you're you going to blow scans like crazy. Uh, you're also supply block too with the Raven, which definitely kind of sucks. Uh, but, I mean, again, that, I, you're playing blind, so your Reaper didn't see anything. And uh, that makes it much harder. But definitely, that's why the Reaper is so fucking fragile. It's so important. That's why That's why I said priority of time. Because we'll, we'll come back to this in just a second, okay? We'll come back to this really fast. But go back to this point right here when your Reaper actually was scouting. Just watch this shit really fast. So your Reaper gets across the map. It goes, goes across, and you poke in. You go out. Now, look at this. Nothing here, right? But... If your Reaper were to cross like this right here, where let's say it goes down, let's say instead of going that way, it comes down this way. It goes up the fucking ramp, up the ramp, comes in this way, goes into the main, you would have seen this. And you would have not had anything defending it. Your Reaper took a massive route and he's already back to here. You could easily right now be like probably right there if you just would have taken a closer route. And your Reaper also stops for a few. Like, it was like, I think it stopped for like 15 seconds or something. Which is really, really long time to not be scouting. And this is critical time to scout. And it's only more critical, again, if you would have scouted with the SCV. This is why I said uh, tendencies of a player. It's only even more critical to scout the Protoss if he prios the core. So understanding that kind of, like, reading a player's playstyle. Oh, this guy's definitely aggressive. You definitely want to find out what the fuck it is before it's a problem and then you could like cater your build to countering this right off the bat and it changes the whole game so this reaper definitely try to practice it more about not wasting too much time with it it's it sets the pace for everything going forward we'll go back to where we just were okay so you're definitely gonna have a problem with this prism 100 percent uh if this guy just ran one dt to your natural and had sent two of them in the prism in your main this would be a huge problem for you but your prism, or sorry, your medevac over here boosting medev what am I to do his base could also be a problem for him. So we'll watch your perspective here first on defense. Actually, okay, hold on. Let's watch this. Uh, since he's actually, you guys are both worrying about the widow mines first. So do not drop like that, okay? Don't drop like that. There's a, there, here's a tip. Huge, 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 huge tip. Never have your boost on cooldown as you enter the base ever always make sure whenever you boost your medevac that it's either going to be off cooldown either somewhere right before the base or as it gets to the base and if you fuck it up just wait okay like you should just wait on this one like because you, like you you just boosted to get here so like right here you boost to get to the base. Like, you boost, like, right now. So let's see it. See that boost. You're really... You're, you're, you're getting really close to... You, you just cast the boost right here. You're getting really close to the base. And what this is going to do is your boost is going to run off as you get to the perimeter of his base. So your boost is on, 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 and it's over as you're getting to the cliff side. This is definitely not what you want to do. You just, like, counter... You kind of fucked yourself over. So what you should have done there is like one boost, 
like maybe like right here as you pick up the widow mines and the boost would take you all the way to probably like right there and then the boost would be over and then you you fly it while it's on cooldown normally and then it would probably come off cooldown like right about there but you don't boost right here either you just would fly normally until about right here right as you like get to the edge of his cliff where you get, just like this where units could be you boost so that you can fly away from them super fast and you can fly towards that super fast and you a boosted medevac flies way fucking faster than any unit in the whole game for Terran would move out of the the out of the medevac. The closest unit that goes to a, pr a prism or a, Jesus, sorry, the closest unit a Terran has that can move as fast as a boosted medevac is a Hellion. Besides that, it's like maybe a stim packed unit. But realistically, boosted medevac is still faster than everything else. And a boosted medevac also means that the medevac itself takes less damage while it goes into the base. So it creates a situation where you can do it multiple times because your medevac doesn't die in one go if you do it well. So definitely boost as you uh, go into the base. And then your boost will be on still. If you cast it like right here, your boost would still be on as you fly over the mineral line. And it would probably end right about like there. And as you fly over the mineral line, you could be like this. You click like, let's say you boost like right there. You click right there. Uh, like your medevac is right here right now. And your goal is to go to the top of the mineral line. As you go right here, you could be like, medevac is currently on move command to this location. And I go drop, click medevac. It drops one of mine right there. It drops one of mine right there. It drops one of mine right there. And then you right click like right over here. And you burrow your one of mines. And they detonate. And if the Protoss has something to deal with it, you could turn the medevac back around, up burrow the widow mines, load it up, try to get away. Or if the Protoss does not have it, like let's, let's if you had an armory or if there were no units here to defend it, you could just leave them there. But the way you do it here, where you fly into his base super slow and then you just drop immediately into his base like this, this is awful. You're giving him such a big warning that you're doing this. He's like, oh, fuck, what are mines are in my base on the very edge? I now have, like, 10 seconds to react to this. Uh, which is not what you want at all. Okay. It's way too much time. Also, here's a tip, too. Huge tip. Try as, as much as you can to do one of two things. Drop the mineral line. Like, try to put your water mines in the mineral line. Or, if you put a widow mine in the gas like this, target fire this widow mine on a probe on the mineral line. I can't tell you how bad it is if you let the widow mine stay on the probe on the gas. Because, number one, there's less probes here. It's less area to AoE probes, which is it's already like not great. Even if you hit a probe and you kill it, it's not great. But what I'm about to tell you that might even happen right now is there's a chance that the widow mine is going to shoot at a probe that goes into the gas, which makes the probe invulnerable. And the widow mine will completely whiff and do nothing. So don't ever let your widow mines kill gas probes if it's an option. Try to make sure that never happens because well, I'm going to play it right now and there's a chance this widow mine might go and it'll just whiff everything. Like watch, watch this bottom widow mine right here. Okay, it, it retargeted, so it's not going to whiff now. It was, tar if you notice for a second, go back like one brief second here. It was targeted on that probe going into the gas. It is literally targeted on it right now. If that shot, it would whiff the probe. And because it whiffs the probe, it whiffs the entire fucking shot. It would just go into the gas in the middle of the gas right here and do nothing. Because the probe is invulnerable. So that would that would just waste your whole fucking widow mine. But because it doesn't have enough time, like the probe is already too close to the gas. And it actually makes the widow mine relocate, like relock onto a new target. Like this. Now it's locked onto this new one right here because it didn't have enough time to shoot. Now it will shoot like as the probe turns into the Nexus. And it means that this Widow Mine will probably kill three probes. It'll probably kill one probe up here on the top. Maybe one probe on the gas if it's connected up there too. If it, if it lines up well. And it'll kill like two probes on this, on this gas. So there the shot goes. You killed a couple probes on the bottom of the mineral line. And like the gas. But that was a risky fucking widow mine shot because it could have fucked everything up. If you would have target fired this probe on the widow mine though, or like if the, like the the probe on the edge of the mineral line, guaranteed you would have killed more probes. Because right there you just killed. So far you've already killed four probes with that widow mine specifically. And if you targeted the edge of the mineral line right there, you would have killed this entire bottom three clump, which could be six probes, and you might even kill like a seventh probe, 
uh, that comes down to the nexus from like this far patch because you could AOE like that whole chunk of the bottom of the middle line if you AOE like right in the middle right here. So I'm not telling you have to target fire every one of mine. Just definitely don't ever target fire gas probes. It's and it could be so much worse. It it, it could do zero damage. <laughs> See, like, right there? You didn't even micro that Widow Mine, which is totally fine. I think it's uh, great. But you killed six fucking probes with that Widow Mine, and this one only killed four, and it was a chance that it could have killed zero. So, definitely, Mineral Line Widow Mines are uh, way, 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 way better. Okay, so, and then right here, right now, I would say the best thing you could do, finally, with your Widow Mine drop is, because you don't have an armory, nor should you, because you're not doing, like, a... You're not doing, like, this crazy, super invested Widow Mine drop build, you should definitely... Unburrow these, load them up the medevac, and then go right here. And then the next time you want to win my drop again, same exact thing as last time. As you enter the base, boost and drop in the mineral line. And then do the same fucking thing again. Because if you just let these sit here and stalkers come kill this, it's a waste. Now let's go back and talk about your what am I defense. Uh, uh, sorry, your DT defense. <laughs> so we kind of referenced this earlier but definitely not good about all the depots here just want one because now this if you if this guy drops in your base right here and he started killing these buildings with whatever he makes you feel like you have to defend this now this is a much bigger investment than just one depot so and it would suck if you let all like all your depots die so it just puts pressure on you which doesn't need to be there all right he gets to the base. Now, I know you're microing what of mines at the same time, okay? I know you're doing that. So I'm not gonna get too I'm not gonna harp on you too hard about this. But I want you to know something, okay? I want you to think about this. So we just kinda briefly talked about how you should micro widow mines. And now if you're gonna focus on this, if you're gonna be like, no, widow mine microing is my priority right now, and I know he has a prism at my base. You should have just went, okay, fuck it. Marines, right click right here. Just get away. Because the Marines only make sense if you are already killing the Prism right now. So it's like a mini game where you need to be under where the Prism's gonna enter your base from. So you're, you're in the area right here because you know a Prism's over here. But if your Marines were right here, you would want to be move commanding here and stutter stepping your way towards like this location right here. Because you need to kill that Prism like, as soon as it enters your base. It's the only way that leaving your Marines here would make sense. If you allow the Prism to unload, and the Prism has not taken any damage yet, it guarantees he's going to get a warp in. And if he gets a warp in, all your Marines are going to die. I don't care what he makes either. It doesn't even have to be DTs. He would do that with Stalkers, with Adepts, or with Zealots. If it was, like, Charge Lots. Because the only way... Your Marines are ever going to win the fight versus a Prism when they have no upgrades and no support from any type of a starport or a factory unit is if they kill the Prism before a warp in happens. It's the only way it's going to work. So if, you, if you're not already having the mindset to fully zone it out, again, because you're doing one of my drop, just fucking abandon the idea that you're going to do that. And just now immediately go, okay, I'm going into my cyclone raven more marine turtle of my base and i'll eventually push you out of it that's like immediately what your thought process should, uh, should have been does that make sense uh yes okay yeah because these units are literally garbage if you allow him to get in your base like that and a scary thing too for you now as well is if this guy was good at micro and he wanted to fuck you over as much as possible. He kills Marines until you scan. And the second you scan, he immediately loads up the prism and flies away. So your whole scan gets wasted. And, like, he doesn't have to fly away, like, all the way over here or something. He can fly away, like, he can load up the prism and fly left and down and go over here and unload again. And then he can do the same thing again where, like, let's say you, your Marines came down this way. Then he kills Marines again and you scan again. He loads up and he flies this way towards your natural. Like, this guy could give you the fucking runaround and tell your factory unit and your starport unit are out. And it would be def definitely super annoying for you. So, having your Marines in an area where they just, like, 
you're guarding the mineral line essentially, or you're guarding the, the, an area that's easier to protect, would make it easier to buy time for your Raven and your, your and your Cyclone. And as soon as these units are out, you don't have to do the scan mini game anymore because the Cyclone can chase the Prism and lock onto it and kill it. And also the Raven can just always see the DTs. And, and, and now it suddenly becomes super easy to shut this down, but it's not gonna feel easy to shut this down if all your fucking Marines are dead by the time these spawn, which is gonna be painful because you left them up here. And, and there's that double DT thing we talked about, right? So, uh, there. just kind of go back to what we talked about earlier about the scout. If you would have known it was DTs, again, there was two ways to deal with it. The first way, like we said, would be you can make an NG bay and you can make turrets really fast. So that in case this guy splits DTs like this, you have detection for both bases. Another oh, way you could deal with it would yeah. be like what you're doing here with you're just using scan energy and you're using a uh, Raven eventually. But if you're going to go this way, absolutely start walling off your natural as soon as you confirm it's a council. Because this would help a lot with everything out of the council except for a blink stalker all in. And if it was a blink stalker all in, uh, well, you know, that's just gonna, it's going to make it more difficult uh, for sure. But it, it, that, if you're playing odds and you want to go for a raven at least you have high odds of having to play against three types of builds that it would be good against and only one build that it's bad against if you wall off with depots. Because it would be good against Zealot, Adept, and DT. Not good against Stalker. Which is the one of four builds there. Uh, uh, so you're saying wall off when I see the console? I'm saying if you see the console and you don't yeah. want to make turrets, you absolutely need to wall off. Okay. If you make turrets... You don't need to wall off because you'll have constant detection in case this guy splits DTs. But if this guy splits DTs and you're waiting on a Raven, you're going to get fucked up anyways because a Raven can only be in one place at one time. So you, if you wall off, he can't be in two places at one time. He can only be in one place at one time as well, which is flying into your base with a prism. He can't walk into your base at the natural. Okay. So it's, it's way easier to control where they go. Because once this happens right here, well, if you're allowing him to walk into mineral line like that, that fucking sucks. Because he's one-shotting SCVs right now, and this is gonna, this could like end the game for you. Like this is gonna be, like let's just watch this for a second. He's probably gonna kill so many fucking SCVs here. He just killed nine SCVs. Nine SCVs is way fucking shittier than having a depot wall. Like, even if it's like, well, it, it's expensive to make it. And let's say your supply was 54 out of, like, 90. And you're like, that's way... A little, I oversupplied a little bit here. But it's still way better to, like, dump some money into that. And, like, overinvest into, into that. Instead of, and you could maintain the mineral mining here and not lose any SCVs. Like, this is definitely a fucking scary problem that you're going to allow yourself to have if you don't wall off. If you're relying on just a Raven. But if you, let's, instead, let's say you go for a... Uh, Let's say you go for a turret defense. What you would have to do then is leave a few units here, like maybe like four Marines to defend this. And you have to be very careful that as soon as DT walks towards this base, you'd have to A move a couple of SCVs at it because it, one, like four Marines might actually lose to a DT if you don't help with the SCVs. Like DTs are really good. Like they hit really okay. fucking hard. But if you actually were like, hey, three SCVs, A move that DT while four Marines just pound it while he's near a turret. If he doesn't pull that back, he kills two, maybe three SCVs there, and he loses the DT, and you didn't have to scan, and you didn't have to pull off the mineral line, and the DT's dead. And then suddenly you're fine. Because this is a this does need to do a lot of damage because this is a huge investment from Protoss. Like the like Protoss has no army really aside from this. So still really good for you overall. Like if you're not losing SCVs. But the way it is right now, not good for you because you just lost a fuckload. That that, that sucks. That makes it really hard for you to come back from this now. Okay, and then with the Cyclone, be very careful about that. Make sure this thing never locks on. The only time you should ever lock on to a unit like this is if he's attacking you, like, right here. But if he... Uh, like, basically, the, the better way to say that is if the Prism is way up here and his units are down here, 
if he's really far away from the prism, locking onto a unit is totally okay. But do not ever lock onto a unit when he's near the prism. Because all he has to do to stop you is if he loads up that zealot in a prism and then immediately re-unloads it, it cancels your lock on and it puts it on cooldown. And it does nothing now. So what you should do is manually go, hey, cycle and lock onto that prism. Because then it puts a pressure on the prism to where if he doesn't fly away immediately, it will die. And it puts this on a clock now to where this is no longer going to get reinforced. And you have to just clean up what's currently here because there's no prism anymore. So it makes it way easier to defend yourself. And then once you deal with the prism, you're th then your cyclone can kill units without a prism anymore. But this is definitely not the way you want to do it because this guy could counter micro this all day if you do it like this. Uh, and then, yeah, also, you're, I think you're overextending as well, though. Like, if you wanted to, if you thought you could kill the prism, let's say you had all your marines still, and you're like, yeah, I could kill that prism, I would agree with it. But I feel like the fact that I, the one thing I don't like is you're, you still have DTs in your base, and you're let, you're exposing your mineral line right now. So I think your priority should definitely be guard yourself first on what's important, which is your SCVs, and then push back. Don't YOLO rush forward. And I feel like the reason why you might be doing it is because you're worried about your depots dying. Because it puts pressure on you. Because this, this feels painful if they all die. Because you overstacked it. Uh, I I actually went to target the prism. However, the auto cast was on. So it targeted the Z lot, I think. At that point, I was like... So, so yeah. if you if you move command to Cyclone, it will not... Uh -huh. it, it, it won't... Uh, it'll, it'll move command to wherever you're going to move command. And then as soon as it gets there, it'll stop. And then it'll target fire whatever's around it, and it will definitely prioritize a zealot over a prism. But if you tell the cyclone, lock onto that prism, and then you never touch it again, it will definitely target the prism. The only way that that would not happen is if this thing like went out of line of sight for a second, which deleted that command, and then it stopped, and then it went back to doing whatever's default, which is around it. So what I think might have happened to you is you might have uh, said, hey, cyclone, lock onto the prism, and then you might have A-moved your marines... But you might have had the cyclone still selected, so it was on a move as well. And then if you a move it, it goes back into lock on to whatever is nearby that is hostile, which will be a zealot. Okay. So definitely want to make sure if you lock onto that prism, you never touch it again. Like you don't touch it with any type of a command that is hostile, like a moving type shit, until that prism is locked onto. And then once it's locked onto, you can do whatever the fuck you want, as long as you stay within range. Do I need to manually click lock on, or I could just use the cyclone to You can use a hotkey. You can... No, so, no, no, no. If you attack it, it's not the same thing. Attacking and lock on are not the same thing. It's a spell. It's like it's like saying a ghost, if it's going to A-move, will it, like, EMP? It's it's not the same thing. Uh, okay. So what you want to do is you definitely want to make sure your lock on, you would use your hotkey even. You can, if, uh, for you, it's probably C. It's C for me. I think it's C for everybody. Uh... But you just hit you hit whatever hockey it is for you, and then left click the prism and don't touch the cyclone again. Okay. And then once you once you tell it to cast the spell on the the prism, once it's doing it, you do whatever you want and it's fine. Okay. <coughs> okay. And then now. Definitely get rid of the prism. If you A-move this again, it's going to target a DT. So, your lock-on. Like you, you ended up actually killing the prism, and then the lock-on goes off. That's totally fine. The way that the way that happened, that was fine. Now you just want to make sure you go deal with your natural, because it's uh, being super fudged here. But I'm actually... I'll say this, though. Nice job doing counter pressure because you also your one of my drop did kill 11 probes but all all these tips we just talked about you could have definitely cleaned up a lot of that and made it even more effective so good shit so far but you definitely room for improvement and if you actually do all the things we just talked about and you th you start thinking about it that way where you're like what is my advantage right now what's my disadvantage and how do i maximize the situation it just makes it so much easier for you to control what's going to happen next like control the situation as it goes forward and the biggest one I want you to know really 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 important is you need to understand the whole prism mini game of am I going to deny it or not and if I'm not get the fuck away from it and go here if you do that 
so much easier. I love the idea of going to deny it if you think you could have. But you gotta if you're gonna do that, you have to deny it. Otherwise, it's bad. You, you have to like kill the prism as it enters your base. And even if he like unloads a DT, you need to target fire that prism. Or whatever unit he unloads. I don't give a shit if it's a zealot, a stalker, whatever. You kill the prism so that it has no warp in. That's the only way that makes sense. Okay. As soon as he gets units on the ground, it becomes a totally different situation of Am I gonna is are my Marines are actually gonna be able to beat whatever just got unloaded and a warp in? Because that's the thing about a prism that's scary. You don't you don't want to think about a prism like a medevac where it's got one payload. Or it's like, oh it's got three auto mines. It's got double. So it would be like a like let's just let's hypothetically say your your medevac had four widow mines in it. If you were a Protoss equivalent, you'd have to actually think about it like it has eight widow mines in it, not four. Because the previous warpin is already in it, and as he goes into the base, the next warpin's ready to go again. So he does it's like he gets the previous warpin, he unloads it while he actually warps in a new one. So you gotta like that's fucking that's when it gets scary, right? To be like, Am I gonna be able to overpower that? And honestly, if you if you have no support because you invested into a widow mine drop, which is totally fine, and you did a lot of damage with it, so good job. But if you don't have any support units for your marines, I definitely don't feel confident that you're going to be able to knock out double fucking rounds of warping from Protoss if you don't kill that prism immediately. So yeah, I get, that's that's critical if that happens or not. And if it doesn't, and you lose all your marines, it puts the game in, t in such a harder position for you. But ultimately, you ended up killing the prism anyways. You cleaned up, so good shit. You just still, you gotta really still fix your base, though. And now that you know what Billy's doing, 100%, I would say, uh, get your get your depots get going now at your natural. Like, you definitely want to wall that off so that, again, you can limit his entrance into your base from one direction, not two. You want him only coming into your base with a prism if he makes another one. You do not want him just walking in whenever he feels like it. Also, I think that obviously I think that was not intentional. I think you're just panicking a little bit, yeah. uh, which is fine. I, I get it. You're just kind of frazzled right now. But yeah, definitely. I know you understand you had a raven. Um, so at this point of the game, I'm actually not sure what to do next. Right, so I can't tell if I'm in a stage where I couldn't actually recover and then I'm not I'm basically not sure what's the game plan from this point forward so you're not in a bad spot at all you're, you're, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now your position could have definitely been a lot better definitely could have been better if you had good execution of attack and defense like better than what it was but what you should do right now is I would say make a third command center because he doesn't have a third base himself. You can you confirm that he doesn't have a third base himself. And play defensive with the majority of your units while you've continuously confirmed there's no third base. Meanwhile, harass him with something. You could make a second raven and you could literally take your first raven and fly around his base and drop auto turrets. You could make, you could swap over your reactor and your tech lab really fast for a second if you wanted to off the factory and the and the and the barracks, and you can make two more widow mines and you can pull this with this medevac back, back and dr make do another widow mine drop and then go back to your marines and uh, tech lab production or whatever, uh, uh, factory production. Uh, like basically the the point I'm trying to make is. From this point on, absolutely want to take a third base so that you have a future in a macro game and play defensive for the majority of your army if he's not going to do the same thing. Because if he if he's going to go, I'm an all-in now, well, if you're defensive, your chances of holding that go up instead of you being in the middle of a fucking map getting caught by a bunch of units while you're okay. taking, like, a third command center, for instance. But you should still always have the idea to harass him. Just think about whatever makes sense with what you have. How can I harass you? And I would say you definitely want to leave one Raven at home just because he has DTs. So it's going to alleviate having to scan constantly. But you could totally harass him with another one or something. You could even instead of, uh, say, you could even say, fuck it. Instead of, what am I dropping him? How about you just send one medevac out? Like, here, you could get creative. 
What if you sent four marines and a siege tank? And you were like, I'm gonna fucking drop a tank right there and siege it, and then drop four marines right here and poke a mineral line. You could do that too. Like, you could, you could just harass him with like one medevac worth of units, or like an air unit that can get in and get out, and it has a chance to not just die. And because what it also does is it indirectly scouts your opponent too the whole time. So you're not only maybe going to kill some units, like some probes, but you're also going to see what composition he's going to go into. Because just because he opened up with some DT grass doesn't mean he has to go DTs all game. He, this guy could go Colossus now. He could go Disruptor. He could go Archon Immortal Zealot. Like, he could do a few things, and if you harass him, you see what he's making. Armed and ready. Is it, yeah, but taking a third base is absolutely the play right now. Like, in your base. Like, take a third right there. Or take it, like... Le like, I don't know, fucking right here or something, or like right here. Anywhere in your base that's easy to defend it. Do not take it there. Or there. Like, don't take it out outside. That's awful. Okay, so you're not taking a third. Uh... Should have saved up for the third. Yeah, I would yeah. say you should save. Uh, so what I was gonna, I was gonna say, taking a third would have been prio for sure there. And the only reason why it's hard for you to afford it is because you lost so many SCVs, and you lost so much mining okay. time, and you scanned a lot. Like that scan here wasn't necessary. The scan over here, the you did a double scan over here because you exposed your units too hard. Like you definitely fucked your economy up a bit by overextending yourself, like we talked about, uh, with the prism idea. But if you if you consolidated your defense a bit more and you you made it a little bit more cost efficient, you could bounce out of this a lot better and you could afford shit way better while like being able to maintain production while taking a third base and stuff. And if you had a depot wall here, if you would if your reaper would have scouted properly, all that shit, right? But lots of things went wrong. And we again we, we did a lot. We we talked about it a lot, so I won't have, I don't want to reiterate it like repeat everything we just said. We'll keep going forward. But if you did all those things or like some amount of them. Would have definitely allowed you to have a better economy going forward, but if you're in a situation now, you gotta, you gotta. Th I want you to always think about the game like this when you find yourself in a situation like you're in right now. If neither one of us takes a third base, we are both all in. There is no advantage to being defensive for either one of us right now. So, it's literally like a rock paper scissors game right now, as to who is going to make the more effective army against what we're both making. And who's going to get a better, like, engagement with that? Like, if, for instance, if this guy makes a bunch of fucking Blink Stalkers, and you go for a bunch of Siege Tanks, and he tries to Blink at you while you're sieged up, and you have a bunch of Stimpak Marauders and Marines just running him down, you would easily win. Or, let's say he goes for a bunch of Charge Lots, and he catches you walking on the map with Charge Lots and maybe, like, DTs, and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm not sieged. And then, like, as you siege up, and you Stimpak, like, half your army's dead. Because he caught you in a really compromising position and you just get run over and die. Like, it's literally rock, paper, scissors right now as to what you guys are going to do to each other. So, you don't want this game to be in a position for you. And the way to counter that would be if you took a third base, it's easy for you to do it because you can take it in your main and you can lift it off later. Protoss can't do that. So, and you know he's not taking one right now. So, you would feel like you have the advantage if you just have a third base going up because you know that you're going into more of a macro game which is going to allow you to overwhelm him over time if he doesn't attack you and if he does attack you it only increases the effectiveness of your tanks with good like uh positioning and shit like that because you have like a cliff and whatever else you're going to do with it i think like at that point i saw that he didn't took the third so i assume that he is going to you know something so i couldn't stop making units and then i couldn't get money to make the third and then eventually I forget about the third, I guess. I so guess that's what's happening. I would say you killed a lot of probes in his base. You gotta think about that too, right? He did damage to you, but you also did damage to him. You killed his probes. And your investment in his base was cheaper than his investment in your base. So you wanna think about that concept as well, investment. You guys both did damage to each other's economies. You guys kind of... I wouldn't say you evened out there. It's hard to say that exactly. I think he definitely did a little bit more to you than you did to him. But 
overall, just understanding like, okay, I did a decent amount of damage, but so did he. So let's just ultimately say, okay, we kind of cancel each other out with economy on the, on the, on the exchange there. Just making it like without having to do the math on it, just making it super simple. But now think about the army exchange. You lost three widow mines. That was it. He lost like four DTs and like two zealots and a prism. He lost a lot more than you did in the army exchange. Uh, like he did, he still did kill some of your marines and shit, but like he lost all of his units and you maintained some of your marines your Raven, your Cyclone, all of it got maintained. Like you, you, I would say you maintained more army than he did through that fight, which is also why you're higher supply right now. So knowing that would be, would, should make you feel a little bit more confident by going, okay, if I do cut units right now, just for a second and take a third base, chances of me just getting run over and killed are lower because I did, I actually, crippled his army more than he crippled mine. Like, you also gotta realize, this is also why, if you memorize things like this, it really puts a lot of confidence into you. DTs are fucking expensive. Like, a DT is not... Uh, like, if, like, let's just say a DT kills three marines and then the DT dies. That's fucking really good for you as a Terran player. Three three marines is not even remotely as expensive as a DT. A DT is uh, like 125 minerals and like 125 gas. Three marines, so that's like 250 in total of gas mineral. And three marines is only 150 minerals, that's it. Not even any gas. It's just a lot cheaper as a whole. Like, minerals are way easier to come by as well. So, and like, this guy lost multiple DTs. And, uh, that's, that's fucking pricey. Like, this guy's, like, easily over, like, 2k minerals lost, or, or 2k resources lost. Like, if we look at it really fast, he's 2.2. So, it's like it wasn't the worst in the world for you and knowing that also not not only that you teched up to 111 the, the equivalent of what he did is he would have gone for like 111 with like a fusion core because you can't make like you have to go gateway which is like a barracks then you have to go for a council which is like a factory then you got to go for a uh actually i guess it's not like okay i, I take it back like yeah I, I was kind of including the, the core there. The core doesn't really count because it's not a gas structure. But I either way, this is a super expensive tech structure. And he's not only gone for a dark shrine, but he also went for a robo. So he's got multiple investments here of tech for Protoss. That is not cheap either. That's the point I'm trying to make. This is more expensive than 111 for Terran. It's just overall more pricey for Protoss because he has multiple tech paths. Um... So like yeah the the, the fact or the, the the chances of him having an army just to run your run you over with right now is very low, like it doesn't really make sense with the money floating around right now. So you in a perfect world you would be able to make units while making SCVs and while making a third base. That's a perfect world, but it's not a perfect world because you kind of executed the earlier attack and defense a little bit poorly. So did he, by the way, but. You, you could have done it better, and because you lost a lot of SCVs, and you lost a lot of mining time, it fucked your whole bank account up. So it feels like you can't afford shit anymore. So that's, again, that's step number one. If you fix that, you can afford everything anyways. But he fucked up too, and being able to register that and analyze that, like, like going, okay, yeah, I killed a lot of his units, and the prism died, and all of his units, like nothing, like, he, I think he recalled out one DT, and everything else literally died. That is, should be confidence for you to go, I could easily get a third base off, cut units for a second, and then go back to making units. It's just, it's just being able to like feel confident that, you, that you're understanding your position in the game, essentially. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Do you, do you, does, do you feel like what, anything I said helps you understand that just now? Yeah, but like at that point, I couldn't think about those things. But if you, if you look at it, if you look at the replay right now, it does make sense. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you got to just, like, don't panic. Just think about it and keep tabs on the fact that you're killing his units. Like, I would tell you, don't fucking make it, do not make a third base if nothing of his died. Let's say every single DT gets out, he like, or maybe, like, you almost killed it, and he turned it into an Archon, and then he fucking recalls it out, and, like, nothing died for Protoss. And, like, now there's this big army buildup that he could run you over with and kill you, potentially. 
Then I'd be like, yeah, you can't make, you're going to make it. If you make a third, you're going to die. Like you need to like hold this and hope to God it's a good fight. Otherwise you're going to die because you just took a massive loss because you had a bad previous engagement or something like that, which is in itself like you already made a mistake, which is hard to come back from. But you, like I said before, you guys both made mistakes. So you guys kind of like reset each other. So it'd be like nothing happened. So like if nothing happens, you're, you feel confident that you could take a third. So you just got to keep tabs on the fact that you guys, if you're like, if you're both getting fucked over or if it's just you. Okay. All right. But yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, listening to this VOD. Uh, probably more than previous ones. I'm not going to lie. I feel like there's a lot of subtle reactionary scout information we talked about that if you feel confident in the future with stuff like this, it changes the whole game about how you approach it. And when you approach it in a way that is more efficient for yourself, it literally makes the game just easier. Like you'll, you'll just be like, wow, I'm in such a stronger position because I made a different choice. Like with just the, for instance, one of them would be like how you placed your Marines. One of them would be like how you walled the depots because another one would be how you scouted with your Reaper. Like if you did the, just those three things, you would have fucking crushed the shit out of this guy with while doing what am I drop to him. And the game would honestly be like over right now because you'd have such a big lead. You gave your tools, you, know, you gave yourself tools that were, would honestly be able to do this. Like pretty decently well it's just your execution was kind of could have been approved i would say a bit but again like now that you're not taking a third base you are effectively all in right now just like he is so there's no advantage for you to play defensive now so if you now we're gonna talk about this really fast if you find yourself in a position where similar to what i said where i where i said you should be harassing him uh, and playing defensive with your army. If it was a, if you were, if you were taking a third base, that would totally make sense. Now, on the other hand, if you're in a position where you're now not going to take a third base, you're going to only make units, and you need to make something happen, make something work. The best thing you can do is think about how can I set up a fight that is going to be as efficient as possible. There's two things I would say you could do. That would make you have a higher chance to break the Protoss if you're looking for the most efficient fight of your life. <coughs> One of those things would be harass him to move his position out of, to get out of position. So have a prism, or sorry, uh, have a raven or have a drop or something that distracts him and gets him to come back to his main or something. Don't let him just stand here and engage that. That's not good. If you, uh, if you just go, all right, let's just straight up fight him in his fucking face, the chances of you breaking that go down a little bit, a little bit scarier. The only way that would make sense for you is if you siege early and slowly push it forward. And you don't just walk into his face and then try to siege everything at once. And then while he's killing you, you're still on trying to siege your tanks while he's got like a shield battery healing him and shit. So try to get either try to get him out of position is one way to do it. Or another way to do it would be like I said before, like I just said, you could leapfrog your tanks and you could even do something like pull, like let's say three SCVs forward and you can start making bunkers. Like put like a tank here, a tank here, a tank here. Your bio is spread here. Your Ravens are right here, ready to drop auto turrets in the front. If he engages you, you start a bunker right there. You start a bunker right there. And then it, as soon as the bunkers are done, you want siege like two of your three tanks and make a new bunker there and make a new bunker there. And you're just literally playing the game of slow pushing him with your tanks and reinforcing with like bunkers and shit in, in his face. And if he, if he engages that, you drop your auto turrets, you guard your tanks as much as you can. And if he doesn't engage it, you just slowly whittle away at him with tanks. But again, if you don't take a third base, you definitely need to do something like that. Because if you just play defensive, the game is a gamble and your your army it's not like I'm not going to say it's like oh it's the worst it's, it's definitely not the worst at all but your advantage if you're going to make tanks is definitely being able to siege him it's not uh, really like go, 
Like, you want to control the situation. You don't want to have, like, mobility. You want to take mobility away if you're going to go tanks. Because this unit sucks ass, or it's really good. It's really bad if you get caught unseiged. It's really good if you're picking away, like, just chopping away his army. Like, shaving it off little by little because you're sieging him constantly. So, creating a situation where that could happen is probably the best thing you're going to do for yourself. Okay. But again, you don't have to even do that in the first place if you just take a third. I, uh, that's the best case. That's the best option for you is take a third base. I want. I want to make sure you know that. Yes. Okay. Good shit. So like this right here, this is fucking scary. You're walking out with no scout. I'm. I'm fucking scared for you. Like you wanna. You'd wanna be able to identify where he is with harassment and then use that to set up a push. If you just walk across the map blindly, that's where you're getting tanks to be as weak as possible. If this guy attacks you right now, you're gonna die. This is super sketch. So he scouted you, so he has an idea where you are, but he just lost two adepts for it, which is a little nice, but still, you're in the middle of nowhere right now. And now you got a, a uh, meta back over here. I would say you just confirmed he's on the map with like a marine over there. Back up right now and let this go harass him. <coughs> if you get caught mid map unseaged, you instantly lose. This is not. This is the worst part of a tank. That's why the only it's safe to push if you know he's here, chasing a fucking meta back around and you're being annoying as shit while you're now setting up a push over here, because it's not going to get run over because you know he's here. And, like, you force that to happen with a with harass. I'm so scared for this army right now for you. Or I'm scared for your base to just get run over and die while you're out of position now. Because you're, you're, you've thinned out your position. Like, your army is so scattered everywhere. I... So... Best thing you can do right now, literally, best thing you can do right now, hide this fucking... You've committed this army so fucking far right now. Like, get it over here. Like, hide it. Get this drop into his base. Wait until you see his army. And then the second you see his army, move out with literally everything. Group it up. Like, the fact that you're moving that out right now, I'm just waiting for that to die to charge lots or something. Like, this is so risky. Because you don't know where he is. <laughs> and this will never win a fight if his army is like right there. It'll just die. And if this dies, it increases the chances that that dies. And if that dies, you lose the game. Because uh, that's all your army. So if you're all your units grouped up because you knew he was defensive, once it's fully grouped up, the chances of you winning go up if he's pure ground and you have tanks sieged with ravens or a raven with full fucking auto turrets able to support that. That's actually a good engagement for you. But I feel like it's not going to happen. I feel like the way you're setting this up is so risky. And there you go, right? And now everything just dies. Because you don't know where he is. Because you still haven't harassed him yet. You haven't forced him to be defensive yet. And now the problem with this... Here's the problem with this. You're doing this as you're doing this. This is not what you want to be doing right now. So all Protoss has to do to deal with this is go, I'm going to warp in 1 DT right there. And then not even look at it again. And if you're not looking at this either, he'll kill every one of your Marines while he also kills this here because you just lost like half your army walking right there. So the chances of you winning this are almost zero. And this is very easily countered. If, unless you, The only way you can deal with it is the second you see a DT warp in, you load up and you boost away and you go somewhere else. But that requires a lot of attention. Which I don't think you're going to allocate to it because you're. Even if you put all your attention into this, this is still going to die as well. There's just too many units now, and uh, it's because you threw away. Like not only did you throw away a bunch of units down here, which increased the chances that this is going to fail. You also scattered your army with a drop. You also scattered your army with more defense sitting at home. Like these tanks are just chilling, and uh, the I know these are new your new units, new reinforcements. But you got to realize as well, this guy's proxy warping in. So his units like this just warp into the fight. If you had your whole army together. So like, think about it like this. 
if nothing died for you, there was no dis like it feels like this guy has a lot of shit, right? But you actually had the advantage. All you had to do was drop him first, get him to play defensive, move out with everything all at once, and then rally point your reinforcements to the front of his base while you slow siege push. And if this actually doesn't die, but as soon as you start doing the siege push, you could now have one of two choices with this. Either fly it at the corner here, and then as soon as he comes to try to defend his front of his base, you re-boost it back into his middle line and drop the middle line and be annoying as fuck. Or you fly this meta back out of the base and like group up with your army and like, increase the power of your big push. And if you had your whole army together, this guy would always have to be engaging into a bunch of fucking siege tanks, which you had like five tanks at one point. Or f you had four. I think you had four because you just lost one and you have one up here and you have two back here. So you had four tanks. Four tanks is crazy. That's two. Uh, that's a. Uh, uh, wait, what is that? 7, 14, 21, 20. That's 280 damage per fucking shot to a stalker. And it's uh, it's 160 damage per di per shot to a zealot or a DT. And the beautiful thing about 160 damage is, th like, basically, the beautiful thing about four tanks is you can one-shot a fucking stalker or you can one-shot a DT or you can one-shot a zealot. So every time this guy gets in range of your tanks, just, like, two or three units die. Two or three units die because of the splash as well. And you are just chipping away at this guy constantly. And then if he actually tries to take an engagement, then you drop auto turrets while you're already sieged with tanks behind it. But again, you'll never get that set up if you just roll the dice. Don't actually create a situation that makes sense and you just walk across the map blindly because, like I said before, where it's like the rock, paper, scissors, his advantage is a move. Your advantage is set up. And you didn't give yourself a setup. If you did, you would crush this army. But if you're walking across the map where you're putting yourself into a stag like a, a scattered A move as well, you're just gonna get shit on because his units excel at that. And yours don't. Like your your Raven and your tank like suck ass at A moving. They're way better at setup. Th does that make sense about how like how to set it up though? Yeah, it's like, I think at that point I was confused about what's going on. And I was like, just let's just go. And then this eventually happened. Um, so... So I want you, okay, think about it like this. Think about it like this. There is no reason to feel confused about what's going on. Because you already know what tech he has. Like, you were, he attacked you with it. So you already know he has a prism. You already know he has a council. And just because he opens DTs doesn't mean he needs to stay DTs. He now will incorporate other aspects of this tech. It could be Colossi. It could be Blink Stalker. It could be Charge Lot. It could be a lot of things. Essentially, all of them combined is it's going to be something that's really good at A-moving. Like, he, like, his army doesn't have to set up. It just fucking is full power walking around. It's His army is basically the equivalent of you going mass marine marauder with Stimpak. And only met like no tanks, no Raven, just a bunch of bio. And all you got to do when the fight starts is hit T and fucking stutter step. You just, your full mobility. That's what his army is the equivalent of because it's a Twilight Council based army, which you already know it was. And you could, you could assume Twilight Council based armies also incorporate the effect of DT. The whole point of what I'm trying to say is, is this army is all about aggressive weapons and gateway usage. Okay, that's all it is. That's like it, it's guaranteed. That's what it's going to be. This is not going to suddenly be like a, a bunch of carriers or something like that. Like something that's d totally different. It's just going to be a lot of gateways with a lot of units that get ex that excel off of the gateway through the council and through a dark shrine if he wants to keep making those units. So anything that's combined of archon, zealot, adept, stalker, uh, and uh, dark templar, like any of these things, and maybe even centuries if he wants to incorporate that as well. That's also whatever. But, so you know, you, you already, the, the point I'm trying to make here is, is you know it's going to be a gateway-based composition. That's all I'm trying to say. You already know what his comp is going to be. It's not going to be a bunch of Void Rays. And second, so your army, the, what your composition is fine. Your, your composition to what he was doing is not, it's not bad. It's, it's a, your, your comp is okay. You have Marauders, which can concussive and tank a little bit of the damage. Also, shit on Stalkers if he has any. 
You have marines that can pump damage into the into the rest of his army behind that. You have tanks that are really good if you have them set up. Your your comp is totally fine. But the other thing is, is you know he's going to be aggressive with it because he has no third. Just like you felt you need to be aggressive, look what he's doing. He's aggressive as well. You guys are both feeling the need to be aggressive because you're both on two bases. It makes sense. If you're not going to expand, what are you going to do? You're going to attack. Expanding caters to the defender. Attacking caters to the RB investor. So you guys have both delayed expansions. So you guys, the fact that you're both going to attack each other, it makes a lot of sense to do that. And then you got to think about the fact that you go, okay, well, I know he's going to attack me. And I know what he's going to attack me with because I know what his tech is. How can I make that to my advantage? And it's sieging your tanks and having a raven to cover that while your bio also covers that. Your army definitely requires more setup than his does. But if you do it properly, you'll fucking destroy him. Okay. So does that make sense? Does, how does that make you... Like, what do you think about that? Like, why, does, it, does anything sound confusing there? No. No, it's clear. Okay. Yeah. So it's because I... I didn't cut units, so because of the early game mistakes, I didn't cut. I didn't have money to uh, product produce units and uh, take a third. Correct. And then I, I didn't cut units and make a third, so I got myself into this um, two base situation where opponent is going two base, and then I moved out without knowing where the opponent is, so I kind of lost units and lost the game. Yeah, and, is it, and the, re the only reason why that is is because, like I said before, it's that rock paper scissors situation, where mm -hmm. If his army, if it, like if whatever he makes, if it just happens to be better than what you make, you're going to die. And the reason why his army was better than what you had is because you're giving his army the advantage that it wants, which is his army is a full fucking A move army, and your army is a setup army, and you didn't set your army up. So you you put your army as well into an A move army, which is way fucking weaker than his. You'd be better off having zero tanks, no raven. I guess Raven would be fine here because he has a bunch of DTs, but just having nothing but Marine Marauder. Like, literally, if instead of having a factor here, you had five racks. Like, two Tech Lab, three Reactor, mass Marine Marauder with one Reactor Starport after having one Raven. Like, that would be... That, that would have made more sense the way you use your army, which is just fucking walking on the map with no setup. And again, the way you set up is, like we said before, you find out where he is, You and if you don't know where he is, you force him to be somewhere harass him like this I'm glad that you had the idea to do that you just didn't do it like the idea was there but you just never utilized it so you force him to come defend this and if he defends it then you move out and if he doesn't defend it if you're like okay well I'm killing probes and he's only trying to defend this with like two DTs I scan it I kill it but his army's not here don't fucking move out then just siege your base. Be like, cool, if you're not going to defend your base, I'll pick apart your base slowly over time. And I'll just stay defensive until you attack me because you're all in his fuck. You know what I mean? Like, there's no reason to fucking move out like this. Okay. If he's not going to play aggressive, or if he's not going to play, I need to defend my base. If he's, if he's going to just go, I'm attacking only, this guy will kill himself with an attack when he eventually does it because your advantage is definitely a setup and he'll never it like you you could like again like, the like way i was saying it earlier where i was like if you had a setup here like if his army went back to the main base and you had a nice setup here that was slowly creeping forward sieging his natural i do think you would win that fight because you actually had more supply and you have a nice composition if it is set up but if this guy decided to just not defend his base and you just never moved out and you kept everything behind a depot wall over cliffs, all gr grouped up with a turret, bunker, like this whole fucking setup here, if your army was really just all over the place here, chances of you winning that fight are like 100%. You would probably kill like a third of his army before he even breaks through the depot wall. With all this fucking bio, shredding all the units on the other side with Stimpak, your tanks are just shelling his fucking units as they clump up in the fucking depot wall because all the melee is like getting on top of each other and if the guy is extremely crazy and he blinks his dts over the wall and his zealots get stuck behind the wall because he's like oh fuck there's tanks 
all of his DTs just engage into your units by themselves, and DTs are super squishy. Like, they're the squishiest unit he has in this whole army. Like, you would just obliterate his army if that was the case. And you would feel confident that it would happen, too, because he's on two bases. And think about this, too. This is a f the final thing we'll say that would make that hopefully make you feel confident as a turn player in the situation. If this guy doesn't want to defend his base and you're slowly shaving off probes or whatever, and you're like, you load up the medevac if there's like too many things here and you go somewhere else and you do it again, and you're just being fucking annoying. The advantage is still on your side, even if you're only on two bases, if, if that was the case. If you're both looking to be aggressive, if he's not giving you the setup, because you can always lift off and land your command center at a new base once this base mines out, and he can't do that. So again, being defensive only made sense for you, even though you didn't take a third base, because he didn't let you get a setup. You you want to be aggressive if you're on two bases, just mm -hmm. like he is, but you don't okay. want to give his army the advantage that it has, which is a move. Uh, okay. Is that is, did, I, did I just confuse you there? How do you, uh, feel free to ask Sorry, any question. I didn't, I didn't get the part where you say being on third base from from my side. That was the last so, thing that you said. The when when you when you chose to stay two bases for a long time, you've committed that to yes. the fact that you need to be aggressive. Yes. He did the same thing, which is committing to the fact mm -hmm. that he needs to be aggressive. Yeah. Now you know that both of you are going to be aggressive. But now you got to think compositionally, how does your army get an advantage? And you okay. you, you should know his army is going to be gateway-based because of the tech he chose to go into. He's not going to okay. be able to go into void rays behind this or some random shit. It's going to be a bunch of gateway units. Mm -hmm. So knowing that his army composition is going to be an army that basically shows up and it's just fucking all over your face in like seconds. He's got blink. Mm -hmm. He's got charge. He's got a lot of mobility. Mm -hmm. so if he doesn't give you a setup the advantage is never in your favor when you're not set up so you always okay. want to make sure if you don't know where he is you're just fucking set up waiting for him to show up Okay. the only way you can move out without having a setup is if you know he's not going to be on the next fucking ramp about to run over your face because you're like oh yeah he's, he's over like a whole bunch of units are in his main base running around chasing a medevac I now have nothing on the map that's going to run me over while I cross the map. It's like, it's like the, basically, if there was like a shark in the water, you don't just dive in the water and be like, fucking YOLO. You're like, oh, I see them way over there. I can get in the water for five seconds and not fucking die. Like, I know I'm not going to get killed by a shark right now. It's just lurking around. So once you confirm where he is, it's safe to move out. If you don't know where he is, don't fucking move out. Because if you're two base and he's two base, Neither one of you has the advantage anyways, economically, at this point in the game. But your advantage okay. is definitely a setup. So because it, like the point I'm trying to make there is if neither one of you has an advantage with economy, you gotta then drop it down to go, okay, how do I get an advantage through army? And it's with a setup. And okay. the the final thing I was saying was where it's ultimately that's a good thing for you, was if the game extends to the all the way to the point where this guy just does not pull the trigger. And he doesn't fucking attack you. And he's like waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And he's like, I'm going to wait until I'm fucking maxed out. Or like, I'm going to wait until I'm out of money or as close to that as possible. And I'm going to do one big attack. The advantage for you would be you could totally keep making a bigger and bigger and bigger setup for yourself defensively. Mm -hmm. And then if he never attacks and you're, you're out of money and he's out of money, you could lift the base, land the base, and guard your base with a good setup still, and he can't do that. So now you're actually mining a fresh base, and he's not. That's the, what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. So, again, your advantage when you don't when you don't have an economic advantage, you think about micro instead, and your army is definitely advantage. Your army gets the advantage when you have your tanks sieged, not when you're walking around driving around just like with you know unseaged mm -hmm. so that's that's all i'm trying to say that's why i hope that, that didn't make more sense saying it like that 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. I totally understand right now. And I know it's hard to think about this shit, like, in the game, like, all going at once. But mm -hmm. that's why, like, that's why I said you. I really highly recommend you watch this VOD a few times after I send it to you. Because mm -hmm. all that shit we talked about earlier, too. Do you remember what I said at the very beginning of this? Or, I'm, I'm, okay, I'll just say it again. And I'll reference something I said earlier. Like, at the very fucking start of this. If this Protoss goes for a Council first... Or, sorry, uh, uh, a Cybernetics Core first before going for a Nexus, that is, a, that is an aggressive tendency. This fucking guy has been aggressive as shit all game. And if you can, like, mentally, like, prepare yourself for, like, you start picking up on little details that your opponent is going to be hyper-aggressive. Like, oh, that's an aggressive thing. This is aggressive. No third, aggressive. All these little aggressive details. You start getting more comfortable about how to think and react in the moment about how to deal with somebody who's aggressive. And you start thinking about everything we talked about. Where you're like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. so play defensive here because... This guy's fucking YOLO. Even though I'm two bases as well, ideally, obviously, you want to be on a third. Like, we already talked about all that, too, earlier. But mm -hmm. if you find yourself in a position where it's uncomfortable, if you can read your opponent to what their what their plans are, you can then try to fuck their plans over, like, throw a gear in the wrenches as much as possible by giving yourself the best, advan the best advantageous position going forward. And again, th for this game, it was sieging your tanks. And keeping them together. Like keeping your army together. Okay. Uh, just one thing. Um, the core. When I see the core, if it's not researching Warcade, does that mean it's going Stargate? But if it's researching Warcade, it means it goes either uh, the Council or the Robo. Likely. That's a, that's a, that's like a it's like a trend. But yes, that's more likely going to be this, like the case. People who don't mm -hmm. prioritize Warpgate aren't mm -hmm. prioritizing... Uh, a council or a robo usually because usually when you want to make a robo it needs to be supported by gateway and usually okay. when you want to make a council it needs to be supported by a prism which okay. warps in units okay. so if the guy does not get warp gate right away he probably will eventually get it later on but if he, that's that's a sign though where you're like this guy's core is done he's not upgrading anything on it and I'm like scratching my chin right now. Like, what are you doing then? If he makes a Stargate, if he flies an Oracle into your base or Void Rays into your base, he doesn't need to have like Zealots covering that or like Stalkers covering that. He could, he could do that by itself. And he could do it faster if he doesn't get Warp Gate. Because it Warp Gate costs gas and Stargate costs gas. So if you, if you it'd be like saying if you don't make a Reaper, you can make a factory faster. Yeah, I think I got everything here. Thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, but I really, I like this. Le this coaching lesson was definitely way more mm -hmm. about concepts. It, there wasn't a lot to say about like your build. Like, oh, your build needs to be mm -hmm. better. The only thing I'll say about your build is just make sure you don't fuck up your SCV production and stuff like that. I did see you do it a couple times, but it wasn't the mm -hmm. end of the world. I definitely think you lost this game because of your decision making. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you fucking, th you actually threw the game right here. You had a you had an okay defense early on, kind of went back and forth with each other, but I think you got a little bit of a worse end of the stick with your economy. You got a little bit of a better end of the stick with your army in terms of like how you guys traded with each other, and you could definitely clean that up a little bit to make it better for you overall. Because uh, mm -hmm. there's definitely things you could have changed that would have made it way better for you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you definitely threw the game right right now when you moved out like that. You threw the game in the trash. Okay. Uh, but yeah, any final questions about anything? Uh, no, that's it. All right, man. Well, uh, I, I'll, I'll like, like as always, you know, I'll have this posted by either to most likely tomorrow, maybe the day after, but probably tomorrow, huh? and then I'll send it to you and stuff on Discord. But yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, dude, thank you again for doing another lesson. It's so many, uh, yeah. and I, I hope it's. Always making well, you feel I, like you're improving. I said, right, two years if I can't get master, I'm switching to Protoss, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think, you know how much... Yeah. If I was coaching you as Protoss, I'd be like, uh -huh. just fucking aim with him, dude. Like, <laughs> that's what, like, that's all he's doing right now. I was like, where is he? A move that shit. <laughs> I think if, like, at June, it's the, the one-year time mark. So I still have a year and like, a few months, I guess. Yeah. 
Well, as long as you're enjoying it, that's all that really matters. But yeah, um, yeah. You just gotta really think logically about what your advantages are and how to maximize them, as we as we discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I honestly, you you did have the you should have won this game. You did have the advantage if you just used your units properly, because okay. his units, his army comp, is actually really bad if you're set up. Like he he's all like you know you know how like a like a fucking what's it called? It's best way I can say this. His army is a glass cannon. That's what his army is. And your army is actually durable and has a lot of DPS as well, if it's set up. But your army is, like, half as effective. Like, it's like your army amplifies when it's set up, and it's very, very... It's, like, half as powerful when it's not set up. So his glass cannon basically killed you before you even got a set up. Because you kind of staggered yourself all over the place, and you never gave yourself an actual fortified position. But if you if you did have that, as he tries to engage you, you would delete like a third of his units, and shit would just die. Like it would be crazy. You you would be, you would feel very surprised probably by how fast his DTs would disappear if he's running into four fucking tanks with siege, like thirty supply of bio stimpact and auto turrets just grabbing aggro as well in the front like his dts would even evaporate if, even if he blinks on top of it yep 100 percent. and you know why that's not scary because dts would the only like dts do a lot of damage but they also take a lot of damage really fast they're very squishy and if he blinks in front of his zealots his dts would disappear after like they would attack you one time and when he attacks you one time you would also attack him as well at the same time because DT's blink is not superior range to a tank's focus. Like, like a tank can shoot further than a DK, DT can blink. Okay. And then also, he swipes you one time, and you have a decent amount of Marauders, and Marauders die in three hits from a DT, and you also have Combat Shield, which means you die in two hits to a DT as well. You're not dying in one hit anymore. So he one swipe doesn't kill units anymore. It takes like two or three swipes to kill your army. And his DTs will definitely die insanely fast while he's getting his first attack off. So he does, like, one auto attack, and, like, a third of his DTs die. Does a second auto attack while having a much, much smaller amount of DTs now. And after, like, the second auto attack, I guarantee, like, all of his DTs would pretty much be dead. Okay. Especially if he blinks forward, after, like, ahead of his zealots. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's super good. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, man, I, I, you know, once again, I wish you the best of luck going forward with this one. I ser I really, 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 I'll say it one more time, emphasize it, watch this shit again. Like, let's do it again. Like, let's do it multiple times. Because if you really mm -hmm. start getting comfortable with the concepts here, not only is it going to help you with your Terran concept, it'll help you start thinking about how to maximize situations for, if you were to play Protoss, for instance, next year, this still applies to Protoss as well with like, how to read a situation in a game uh, to the better of yourself. Okay. So, because that, that's one of the biggest problems. That's, it's one of the biggest things every player needs to overcome is learning how to feel confident in a game and not go, I don't know, I don't know, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. It's hard to, to learn that, but once you do, it makes the game so much easier. Okay. All right, dude. <laughs> well, anyways, have a good night. Thanks for doing it. I will send you the VOD. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah, take it easy, man. See you next month. All right, later, dude. Bye. Do, 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 do. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the uh, coaching lesson. I will uh, post that to YouTube, um, you know, later today, tomorrow or something. If you guys watch this on YouTube yeah, and you liked it, you know, I have a lot more stuff just like this that you can also can check out. Uh, if you if you you know want to. I have stuff for every race, too, if you're someone else who wants to look at, like, Terran or uh, Zerg or Protoss. But anyways, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. And until then, good luck and peace.